Hi, everybody. Welcome to Busy Living So Busy Living So Busy Living So It's episode 233. 233 episodes. Wow. And, you're not and guess what? It. It's 2021. It is. It's 2021. Here we are. And um, today's topic, you know, there's so much social unrest in our world today. It's, um, it's crazy how divided we all are. And um, it's sad, but maybe it's not sad because the reality is my judgment is off at all times. Um, I want to talk about judgment and I know we've talked about it before, but I like to talk about it again. And I want to talk about living life to the fullest one day at a time. Um, I think that's one of the big things that I learned. Would you agree? Coming in and getting sober was learning to live one day at a time. Absolutely. I had no concept of it. I didn't even know when they talked about it, I didn't even know what they were talking about. I mean, like, what is this one day at a time crap? Like, what are they talking about? You know, like, of course you got to be thinking about tomorrow and the day after and all that stuff. Of course you do. Like, what are they talking about? Or like, or, or like what happened before? Mm -hmm. I didn't even, I didn't even, that wasn't even part of my equation. That's how crazy I was. I just had no idea what they're talking about. Like it, it took a while to figure out for me. It did. Yes. And what, how did it, how did it, how did it transpire and how, what, 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 I don't know what, really what how happened? it actually, I don't know how, I don't know when it happened, but um, it happened. And that's really how I live now. You know, I really, I don't spend a lot of time. I just don't spend a lot of time in any other time other than today. Um, Cause it's just not fruitful. You know what I, and I had to learn, I just had to learn about myself a lot really. <clears throat> and what I learned was that, you know, I always had these, little plans of like what was going to happen and where I was going to go and what I was going to do and what everybody else was going to do and what they were going to look like and what they're going to wear and, you know, on and on and on, like very detailed plans and, and, uh, and things never worked out the way I, I had planned, you know, um, and the kind of person I am. So when things don't start to, when I can see, oh, it's not going to work out the way I planned, like then I go to work. Right. And I, start to massage the situation to get it to work out the way I want it to. And, uh, um, Oh, I like makes, that you said that it makes a lot of people around me really angry when I do that. And, you know, it really does. Cause I'm trying to get them to do stuff that they don't want to do. Um, and, and I just, and I never knew that I did that. I mean, it took a while in recovery to figure out like, Oh my God, that's what I do, uh, you know, all the time. And, uh, so that's really why, I st and the main reason why I stopped was I had a lot of, um, I hadn't had a drink in a long time, but I had a lot of uh, just not good relationships. And it finally occurred to me that the common thread of all these relationships was me. And uh, that maybe I needed to change instead of all these other people, right? Um, and, uh, and that's really the, the change that I had to make was that you know, I, I need to, uh, in its simplest form, I need to uh, just adjust my life to whichever way the wind's blowing instead of spending my life trying to get the wind to blow the way I want it to blow and then be mad because it won't, right? So, you know, so it is what it is. I love to say that. And uh, what's going to be is going to be, and, and I'm fine with that. You know, like, it sounds like fate. I used to think fate, like, oh my God, like people that say, what's oh, fate? Like, what a terrible, it's fate. Like, you're just a quitter, you give up. And uh, that's not the case at all. You know, if I want to be uh, relatively happy and peaceful and serene, then I need to be in today and I need to leave tomorrow, especially. And also yesterday, I need to leave that to my higher power and let him be in charge of, of all those times that aren't right now, you know, and that includes five seconds from now. I just need to leave it to him. And I just need to worry about right now, what's going on right now. And I want to ask you something. So how did the people around you, because I wasn't around you when you first realized that it was time to be, do life one day at a time. And I didn't know you when you didn't live the way you live right now. I've known you for almost, it's going to be eight years. Yeah. Might be eight yeah. years. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. and I could say almost eight years. Is mm-hmm. it almost eight years? 13 to 21, is that 18? Is that eight? That's eight, yeah. Yeah, eight years in February that we've known each other. And so when I met you, you you definitely were living one day at a time. And where and what did the people around you think when you changed that? Because I've found that some people that are around me don't like when I change. Well, I didn't ask, you know, I, I didn't ask. So what do you think? How do you think I'm doing now? <laughs> you know? Because um, you don't care. I just, I, I do care, but it's just, it wasn't really like that. I mean, I just, I just was, uh, you know, I was a pain in the ass before. I was a control freak. And, and I was a pain in the ass. And a lot of people around me, like, the, especially my, my loved ones, were like, they were afraid of me because I was a control freak. And when things didn't go the way I wanted to, I'd get, I'd get upset, you know? I mean, I would really work hard to try to get everything to change how I, how, what I thought it was supposed to be. And, uh, you know, I look at it like I'm a visual person. So I look at it like I have this plan for my, my life was this beautiful picture, right? Like a, a jigsaw puzzle. And, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to make this, I'm going to put this all together and it's going to be this beautiful picture when it's done. But what I didn't realize was that, you know, I did the pieces that I had, you know, they weren't the right pieces for the puzzle. And so I'm just trying to jam them in all the time to, to, to make it work when it's just, that's not how it's supposed to be. It wasn't going to work. It just wasn't going to work. So I, I, I would imagine that people around me were for the most part, they, they had to be very relieved, you know, cause it's not being around a control freak. It's just, it's not easy. It's no fun. Yeah. I can, um, I can attest that I, I think that I might be a little bit, I, I don't know. I used to be way more of a control freak. I was looking, if you're watching this, which a lot of people just listen and don't watch, but if you watch it, he just took his hand up and went, just a little inch. Um, <laughs> it's interesting because right now we're in, and I just like to talk about relatable things and stories we're going through right now. So we're in the process of buying a house and it's there's a lot of hoops that you have to go through when you're buying a house, right? Like get people documents and all the rest of it. And JF has been walking through this so calmly. I mean, he's frustrated and he's tired and he doesn't like being a secretary or he's not a very good administrator, but I've like given it to him and I'm not getting involved in it really at all. And, um, and he's doing it. And I have a friend that was over today and she was like, God, he's so cool and collected. I mean, they want other documents and here he is. He's going to get them the other documents. And, and that's what you do. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. And you don't, if it's okay. Well, sure. It is. It it's is all ab- going to work out. It is absolutely going to work out. I know that. And I know that um, that's the beauty of one day at a time, which really is like living in the, in the moment to me is the beauty of it is, is that I've learned that I'm only responsible for my action. Like that's my job is just to do what I'm supposed to do. And whatever, what's going to happen, that's not my job. You know, that's his job. And I always thought it was my job. So I used to always, I would decide what I wanted or where I wanted to be or whatever it was. I'd, I'd pick my goal and then I would tailor all my actions to get to that goal. And uh, um, it's, it has its advantages, that lifestyle. You know, it's a driven life and, uh, you know, a lot of like a very financially successful people live that way. You know, they get what they want. Um, but the problem with it is, <clears throat> is that, uh, what, what I learned about it is that I, when I do that, I limit all my possibilities to my own imagination. And I've talked about this before too. So I limit all my possibilities to my own imagination and, uh, as great as I think I am, I'm not that great. You know, I'm not infinity. And that's what, the, that's what God is. That's what the higher power is. And uh, so when I do that, I take myself out of the infinite possibilities of the, of the higher power. And I leave myself stuck in the finite possibilities of JF, um, which just aren't that many possibilities. And I realized that at some point. So that's why I just leave it to him and uh, 
you know, try really hard to do the next right thing. And, and I'm okay with whatever is going to happen. So I didn't really have like in my wildest dreams, you know, I never thought that I'd be sitting here with you in Fort Lauderdale doing this, that thought never would have never occurred to me, you know? And so I would have never been able to tailor my actions to get there because I never would have thought of it. Right. You know, so I'd be off doing something like left to my own devices that would be not nearly as cool and as awesome as the life that I actually get to live by letting it all go. You know, so, I love that. That great? I, it is pretty awesome. Um, you know, I love that our judgment is what puts us in this place of saying something good or bad. And there's a great podcast. It's actually going to be on tomorrow. I know I'm doing these back to back because I'm a day's late, whatever. I'm, it's just a lot going on in our lives right now. And I haven't been as diligent as getting my day up on this day, but I have a lot of guests coming on in the future, like the next couple of weeks. I mean, like I've got double booked guests and I'm still booking in the middle of May with guests. And um, so I'm, I, I don't know how much you're going to hear of just the two of us. I'm going to throw us in there when I can, but we've got a lot of guests coming on. And the guest that came, that's coming on tomorrow is fascinating, I, I have to tell you. And um, his name's Dr. Dr. Brady. And I think that's his name. I think that's what his last name was. But anyway, long story short is that he is a minister, but he used to be in a drug cartel. I mean, it's like a crazy, fascinating story. And he talked about, you know, the epidemic of addiction in our world today and, you know, drug addiction and people that are homeless and w what's going on in this world. And, you know, JF and I've always thought, especially JF, you know, most people that are in, in institutions are there because of drugs and alcohol. And all these people want is not anybody to judge them. They just want somebody to love them. And I think that being able to live in the moment, I think also gives you the ability to love people unconditionally because you're not focused uberly on what happened before. So you're not bringing stories of yesterday and you're not also bringing projections of stories in the future. You're just being in that moment and you can love people unconditionally at that point and not bring your judgment. What do you think? Yeah. I think I know where you're, I think I know where you're, what you're talking about. Did explain, I go around, did I go, it a little did more. I go around the block on that? <laughs> did I go around the block? What I mean is that you know, I think that we go around, especially when I was drinking and prior to getting, prior to getting sober, I, I was a black and white thinker. I was either, things were either good or bad. People were either in or they were out. Um, people were either people I didn't want to have anything associate with, or there were people I wanted to associate with. Mm -hmm. um, and when you get sober and you get this ability to which is a grace of God, I believe, to have be sober because it doesn't happen to a lot of people. Um, the people that are sober today, I feel like it's a gift. It's it's something that's huge. You take your ego out of it. You um, you finally surrender to this thing that you can't see and you can't touch, you can't smell and you can't feel, which is God or a higher power, whatever that is. And you surrender your life and you're like, all right, I'm going to learn a new way of life. And when I learn that new way of life, I have to really get my judgment out of there because my judgment is skewed. Isn't that the truth? Isn't my that judgment is so skewed. Like what I thought was the worst thing in the world, which was that I had to give up booze, ended up being the best thing that happened to me. Mm -hmm. I even have to say, when I met JF and I was like, oh my God, he's got these tattoos and they were scary. I was like, I don't know if I wanna go out with somebody who has tattoos. But that was my judgment. That was my simple teeny brain, my little brain in my head that was like, oh, I have to judge that person because they're different and they have tattoos. So that makes them good or bad. It didn't make, instead of just going, oh, he has tattoos. I still don't find them attractive, but that's okay. But that doesn't mean the whole person's bad, right? I, it, and it's not that they're bad. I just don't like them. I don't like them because I just think, you know, they're whatever. They start in your to- judgment. In my judgment, I think they get just they get distorted. They aren't as colorful. They don't mean anything when time goes forward. And I guess the real answer would be they're not for you. Maybe they're for somebody else. They're not for me. They're for somebody else. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. I just don't even know anything that I would like to put on my body that would last that long. But anyway, not to digress. 
But if I went to my simple thinking of like, oh, I'm going to judge the book by its cover and not really go deep, then I wouldn't have this life that's amazing with this person that I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life with. Like I would have just missed him because my judgment would have said, oh, pass because the book, the outside cover doesn't look like, but I have to say, it's not about the cover anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just not, my judgment is just, I don't know. And the longer I stay sober and the older I get, I realize my judgment is so far out there wrong that I just have to stop. I can't say what's good or bad. I have no idea. And that's freeing. It is, it is, it definitely is. It's a, uh, cause I, I agree with you hundred percent. Like who am I to say what's good or bad? You know, what I've learned is that if it's, what the, what really, what that really means to me is like, if things are going the way I want them to, it's good. And if things aren't going the way I want them to, it's bad. Um, and like you said, I don't know what's good and what's bad. And I can tell you, I mean, you know, when I was a little kid, um, you know, Brussels sprouts, bad cream soda, good. Now I'm a grown up cream soda, ugh. Brussels sprouts. Yeah. They're not bad. <laughs> you know, not every night of the week. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, like you, I had, um, you know, and, and getting back to the one day at a time thing I had, um, when I, I had a, the job that I had when I got sober was a job that I, uh, worked hard to get and a business to put together. And I had my <clears throat> entire future wrapped up in this job, my identity, everything about me was wrapped up in this job. And I lost the job a couple of years into sobriety. And I thought, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I'll never bounce back from this. I'll never get a job as good as that job was. I'll never have a job that has the possibilities that that job had. And uh, of course, God had a different plan for me. And, you know, and, and I thank God every, every day just about that I lost that job, you know. I mean, it was very painful when it happened, but you know, by not having that job, it, once that door closed, every other door that was out there opened up all of a sudden, but I didn't know that cause I'm a little human and you know, I was, I was stuck in it. Um, so what I learned was that, you know, my, my, my judgment of good and bad is skewed. And, uh, you know, I really need to know as I go through life is like, uh, all it means is that a door has closed. And, uh, you know, that just means it's time for me to try some more doors. And there's so many doors out there to try if I'm willing to try them. Right. I have no idea where I'm going to end up. And that's the beauty of it. Like I just, I, I gave up on my whole plan because I'd rather just see where I'd, I'd rather just see where I end up. Right. And then instead of trying to get someplace. So like you said, we're in the process of uh, buying a house together and, uh, if you had asked either one of us six months ago, you know, if we were going to be buying a house where we're buying a house, we, we would never even have thought of it, you know, but yet that's where we're going. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. And uh, so we're going to get there and we're going to see what it's like. And it's going to be awesome. You know, or we move. It's like, we aren't married to any, you know, except for each other, <laughs> but every place we've gone, yeah, you know, I mean, every place I've gone has been awesome. Yeah. in my life, you know, since I got out of my own way, you know, since I put the reins down and let somebody else, you know, do the steering, it's been great. Getting to that place is hard. It's really hard. It's really hard. It's to... really hard. And you can bang your head against the wall and you can, tr it's, it's so difficult to just let go, just to I'm let so go. I'm so glad you said let go. Cause that's what it's all about. It's all about letting go. It's all about letting go. And it's all about that free fall that we did when we were kids and we'd fall back into somebody and you'd be like, all right, they're going to catch me. And having that free fall in life is, is um, to be able to do that. It's just so freeing is it's the craziest thing. Cause you wouldn't think it would be. It's be like, Oh, wait a minute. I'm letting control that I'm letting control, but it's, it's freeing to not like, be like, it's all going to work out. And I think even with relationships, I think people 
are in relationships with people. And when you're going through a divorce or you're going through a breakup and you're like, oh my gosh, this is it. I'm never going to be happy again. My life sucks. It's going to da, 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 da. I mean, my story could go to ad nauseum. And the reality is you have no idea what is going to be down the road for you. And all you need is that patience to be like, all right, I'm not just going to shove something into this hole that doesn't feel right just because I want to have something in the hole. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's often like, well, something's going to be better than nothing. And now I have nothing. Right. So now I have nothing. So I'm just going to go make something I'll, happen, I'll even though I could not trust that something in that universe is going to bring you together. Cause it always happens. I mean, every story that you hear that's amazing. is like, I mean, I'm, I, I, I've met people that were like in the same building and this, they grew up together in the same block. They never met each other. They didn't see each other. And then they, years later, they meet each other and they fall in love. And they're like, oh my God, I, I, you were right at my door every day and I didn't see you. And how many times can that happen in somebody's life? And I think sobriety, like when you put down the drink, you're able to see things differently. You know, it's not always easy. It's not easy by an interest imagination. It's hard and it's a new way of living and it's, it can be strenuous. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a whole new way of life. It's change. And as humans, we don't like change. Like Jeff was talking about how we're going to this place and we're moving there and I have fear. So I go to, oh my God, I'm not going to like this. I'm not going to like that. This isn't going to be there. This isn't going to be there. And I go to all this negative stuff instead of going to, it's going to be fine. Just go for the ride and see what it's like. I've got to stop. I'm the one that has to remind myself that, but I can see when I'm doing it now and go, oh, okay. And then by, I'm lucky to live with you. And I see it by example. And, um, I, when I'm helping people along the way, I, I, I always bring that to their attention. I'm like, wait a minute, we have no idea what's going to happen. But as humans, we want to know. I don't know why we want to know, because I think if we knew, we might not want to go there anyway. Oh, well, the, um, I think that, um, you know, they talk about fear and faith being opposites and, uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's that thing of fear of the unknown, um, or I can just take it on faith and it takes a lot of faith. It really, it takes a lot of faith, you know, to say, I'm just going to take it on faith. And I'm and not, that's why we always want, we always want to know. I mean, you, you know, people, and, and I know people that, um, you know, they've said like, oh, I have like this, this pain. And, uh, I just want to know what it is. Like, I, I'd, I'd rather know that it's cancer than, than not know what it is. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, you, that's not what you want to do. You don't want to wish for that. You know, you just you got to take it on faith. So, I mean, that, and that's the, to me, faith is I leave the future to God. That's faith. And, uh, you know, and, and if, when I have that faith then I don't have to have any fear, you know, cause it's just, I can, you know, and it's funny cause we always think like, Oh, oh my God. Like what if this happens and you know, and it, it's going to be really terrible. And what if this happens, and it's going to be really terrible. And, you know, we never sit around and say, well, what if this happens? And it's going to be really great. You know, or what we just never think that way. Right. Cause our fear gets in the way. Like you said, we don't like to change. And so we need to know what's going to happen. We're not going to know what's going to happen. And it takes a lot of faith. And it took me a long time to, um, you know, to be able to get that faith. It takes time to get faith. It takes time to, um, and I think that it takes time to say that it's okay that I'm not going to do anything. I think it's hard to say, I'm just not, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to feel uncomfortable in my uncomfortable feelings that I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. And wait. And just wait. Like, I, I think our society says you always have to be busy. You have to be doing something. Well, COVID's given us the ability to just say, well, I can't do anything. I, I, I can't go out. I mean, luckily where we are, we can go out a lot of places, but in other places of this country and around the world, you can't go anywhere. And so this is a perfect time to just sit there and just go, all right, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to watch TV. I mean, thank God there's more stuff on that boob tube than there ever has been in my whole life. And you can watch show after show after show. You can watch repeats of shows that you never saw. You can go back and, you know, do many things. You can watch movie marathons. You can do lots of things while you're sitting there and waiting for the next sign to come, but don't force things because forcing things, then you have to back out of them and it's uncomfortable to back out of things and do all that. I mean, that's funny. Cause my, my 
my uh, business partner and I talk about that all the time. I said, you know, we, when we ever, we try to force the issue, it never works out for us. You know, so we can't force the issue. You know, we know that. And that's, you know, part of like what I do is like, that's been a great gift of my job is like, I never know what's going to happen. I don't know what the market's going to do. Um, but I do know like what's a, a good action and what's not a good action. And so if I keep taking the good actions, I can just leave everything else to, to the higher power. Don't try to force it. And, and it's worked out well for me over the years. Same thing in life. Yeah. It's um, life is, is interesting. And it's when you realize that you've been drinking for a long time and I was 37 when I came into this program, JF was 36, but, um, and people can come in older, younger, whatever age group you are. But when you come in and they're like going back to living one day at a time, if we live one day at a time, these gifts start to come into fruition. And when we stop like going and staring backwards at something we can't change and going and thinking what's going to happen in the future, we, we really miss the beauty of each day. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, and, and when you take it back to the basics like that, um, you know, it just really made me think about the fact that, uh, you know, before I got sober, you know, how many times did I say to myself, I'm never going to do that again. And, uh, you know, and then I would do it again, but you know, but I it never, the thought never occurred to me. Like, why didn't I just say like, I'm just, I'm not going to do that today, you know, but it, it never occurred to me, you know, like you said, black and white thinking, I'm either all in or all out. And, uh, you know, so then I, I came into sobriety and they never told me, you know, that first day I walked in, you're never going to drink again. They said, just, you're just not going to drink today. You know, well, try not to drink today. Well, no, they told me you're not going to drink today. That's it. They didn't tell me, try anything. They told me what to do. You're not going to drink today. If you want to drink, drink tomorrow. And that's fine. And that was good because that was a small enough bite of time. You know, when I have, when you have a habit that you're trying to break, you know, and, and it's a habit that you've been involved in for a long time, you know, to, to just to go cold turkey and say, I'm never going to do this again. That's very difficult. That's a lot to swallow, <laughs> you know, I know, but it's easy to say, it's much easier to say, I can, I can do the today. I cannot do it today. I can break my habit for just one day. I know I can do that. I know I can get through the day and not do my habit. I know I can do that. And I could. And, uh, you know, what happened was that, you know, the days add up to weeks and the weeks add up to months. And like the next thing you know, you're like, oh my gosh, like I haven't done that habit in a really long time. And, and in fact, it's been so long that I don't even miss it. I didn't even realize it, but I don't even miss it anymore. You know, I don't think about it all the time anymore. Um, I think about other things and I have other things to do. And, and that's the beauty of really of sobriety. It's a dual edged sword. You know, you get your life back and you, you suddenly have all these things that you can do. And, you know, it really fills up your day to the point where if you're not careful, you know, you can be right out of the day again, doing other stuff. It's, um, it's amazing. I love what you said about, um, you know, I'm never going to do this. You know, I have to say, and I just have to bring this story up because it's kind of funny. Um, we just had our wedding anniversary as most, a lot of you might know. And, um, we, um, we, when we were, uh, so three years ago in January, I had said, no, four years ago in January, I had said, do you want to get married? And JF said, no, I'm never getting married again. And I said, okay, then when are we breaking up? And I wasn't yelling and I wasn't screaming. I wasn't acting like a kook. I just said, when are we breaking up? When are you leaving? And he was like, what do you mean? When am I leaving? And I'm like, We're, well, I'm not going to date you for the rest of my life. I mean, now you are. <laughs> Now I am, but he came back to me and he's like, I never wanted to get remarried again. And now she's like, we have no idea. We have no idea. 
And I think that if we like could just get to that place that we're just like, I'm just going to be open to whatever the universe brings to me. Obviously, if the universe is bringing you cocktails or drugs and you want to get off of them, that might not be the right road you're going on. And maybe you need to change that up. But getting to that place that you're just going to be like, I'm just going to surrender to not drinking today. And I'm going to see what the world brings me. I swear, if you just do that and live it one day at a time, your life will be beyond your wildest dreams. Yeah, absolutely. There's no question about it. No, no question. It's tough. It's tough when you get there and you decide you want to break up with it. I, I, I understand that so much. I have a friend who's trying right now and it's really tough. It's real. I have a friend. I have a lot of friends that are dealing with this right now. And this is a really hard time for a lot of people out there. There's a lot of people struggling today and it, it makes me really sad and it makes me bummed out. And, um, and I feel for everybody that's out there and we send our love to you all. And I have to tell you that I, Elton John said the best thing that came out of the pandemic was zoom meetings. I have to tell you that because Elton John's been sober for a while. And um, everybody knows who Elton John is. So he's been sober for 30s. I think maybe, no, maybe 22 years. I don't know. He might be, I think he's around your time of sobriety. But he said the best thing to come out of this pandemic is Zoom meetings. So if you're out there and you're listening and you're like, I want to listen some more. Or I want to hear, you know, check out a Zoom meeting. And if you don't know one, I host one every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um and don't let your judgment get in the way of trying it out. Yeah, don't let your judgment get you skewed. Don't get you put yourself in a back corner and be like, oh my God, what is it gonna be like? Da, 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 make all these questions. Just try it. Mm -hmm. All the information is on busylivingsober.com. B-U-S-Y living sober.com. What is that thing in the uh the big book is uh, contempt prior to investigation? Yes. So yeah, just don't tell yourself, eh, it's not for me. I try know it's it. not for me. Come on. <laughs> Try it first and see if you it's You get to really meet us you. in real life. You'll get to see us on Zoom in real life. I tried something that I knew wasn't for me the other day. What? And uh, I kind of liked it. It was a chocolate chip cookie that had bacon in it. <laughs> I was pretty sure it wasn't for me. But it was But good. I thought I'd try it and darn it, I really liked it. Oh, they're really good. They're <laughs> really, really good. Chocolate chip cookies with bacon. See, that's what you can aspire to instead of cocktails. Mm -hmm. so you yummy, just, yummy you, recipes. You never know. You never know. Well, you know what? Thank you for coming on and listening to us today. And um, if you're out there, please reach out and know that you're not alone. You can always reach me at busy, B-I-Z-Z-Y, at busylivingsober.com. You can go to my website. My stuff's on there, busylivingsober.com. This meeting, I was just talking about the Zoom meetings under Morning Hope. It's got the tag. It says Morning Hope. And um, it has the Zoom information. There's no passcode. Just come and we'll let you in and come and hang out and see if you like it. You don't have to put your camera on. You can put your camera on. Do whatever you need to do. But just know you're not alone. And um, you can do this too one day at a time. Great. Okay. Until next time. Keep getting busy. Living, living sober. sober. Bye, Bye, everybody. See you next time.